My name is Brendan. I'm the host of Master Talk, your go-to channel to mastering your talk. And on this week's episode of the show, we're going to be going over my five basic tips in five minutes. So let's get into it. Number one. Master silences. The biggest difference between average speakers and exceptional ones is their ability to use silences as a way to make their presentations better rather than a way to detract their presentations and seeing them as a burden. And to fix this, all you need to do is what I like to call forced silence drills. You take a partner, and then that partner records two types of presentations with you, one with silences and one without them. So in the first recording, you just give your pitch as you normally would. And in the second version of the presentation, you would then force your partner to pause at specific parts of the presentation so that they can master it. Let's say Michael is a great guy. He goes to work every day and he enjoys his life. Let's use that same sentence now or a similar one with silences. Michael is a great guy. He goes to work every day with a smile on his face. But the thing that makes Michael the most interesting is that he's the kindest person you'll ever meet. Notice that with silences, your presentation is a lot more punchier. It's a lot more interesting. So force yourself to silence and master your talk. Number two, master your ums and ahs. Students ask me this all the time. Brendan, how do I remove my ums and ahs from this presentation? And my advice is simple. All you need to do is replace your ums and ahs with silences. And if you're able to do that, you're going to be that much closer to mastering your talk. But in that regard, what I want to emphasize here is during your practice and as you get better at them, you're going to do this thing that I like to call cutting midway. So what's going to happen is as you practice this, since you don't have full control over your silences and you're not a master yet, you won't get to choose when you actually pause. So because of that, your sentences are gonna cut midway. Let's say John loves apples and you normally say John loves uh, apples. When you practice this, you're going to do this. John loves apples. That's what's called cutting midway. So as you're practicing this and you'll be able to remove your ums and ahs as long as you replace them with silences. Number three, master your audience. The quality of your presentation is directly related to how much your audience loves it. And the only way to spread your ideas is to make sure your audience really enjoys it. So then they talk about your ideas to other people. And there's three things you need to keep in mind before crafting any type of presentation with your audience in mind. The first one is what is the goal of your presentation? Are you there to teach your audience a specific subject or subject matter? Or are you there really to motivate them? So understand the goal of your presentation. Number two is understand the needs and desires of your audience. Your audience might be there for different reasons. They might have different expectations. They might wanna learn something specific. So it's important that you study them, whether it's doing some research, talking to them before your presentation so that you can tailor your message to what your audience is looking for. Number three, this is probably the most interesting tip out of all of the questions that I've demonstrated today. And that's understanding your needs and your audience's needs, but also communicating those needs back to them in a way that gets them excited. What I'd say in every single keynote that I give is I could just walk in here, give my tips and just leave. But that's not a way for me to get you excited and to share my ideas out with everyone else. That's why when I walk into a keynote, I tell stories, I get excited, I use my energy levels, and I specifically use analogies that I find relates more to my audience. Instead of saying, my blood pressure is rising up, I could say something like, my blood pressure is rising up faster than customers on Black Friday running to get something. Analogies help you tell your message in a way that gets your audience that much more excited to talk to you and listen to you. Number four, master eye contact. Eye contact is one of those tricky subjects because it varies based on the space that you're in, based on the size of your audience, and more importantly, based on who you need to prioritize depending on what the goal of your presentation is. But regardless of space, size, or prioritization, there are three key rules that apply for any situation whatsoever. The first one is you should never ever deviate eye contact from your audience or your slides if you have any. 
If you look anywhere else, whether it's up, down, left, right, side to side, anywhere you want, besides the person you're talking to and the slides, you're doing it wrong. The second thing that you need to keep in mind is prioritize to maximize. So let's say the goal that you have in a presentation is to win business for a marketing client. So let's say we're pitching to Pepsi and we're a marketing agency that wants to win their business. At the end of the day, it's important to look at everyone in the room, but there's going to be people in the room that are just there because there's a meeting and there's going to be the chief marketing officer or even better, the CEO who's standing there and watching your presentation. So it's important that you look at everyone in the room, but that you prioritize to maximize by looking at people that are more important for the goal that you want to achieve. The third thing within that tip is to address every group in an audience. Eye contact is very tricky, like I said, because there's already so many things that you have to keep in mind, whether it's ums and ahs, silences, and the list goes on. That's why for beginners, what I generally recommend is let's say in a room, there's two types of audiences in two different places in the room. You want to address yourself to one group and then one group. So let's say it's a 15 minute presentation, you would do group one, group two, group one. So that way you don't have to be bogged down with the idea of looking at every single person in the room. But obviously as you practice, you'll be able to do that as well. Number five, master posture. A lot of people tend to believe that posture is something very easy to master. You know, keep your head held high, keep your shoulders aligned and you'll be perfect. But there's a lot more to posture than it may seem. A lot of speakers make two big mistakes. Their leg either ticks tremendously whenever they're talking or their feet are too wide apart. That's why I recommend to stick together. So whenever you're in a presentation, glue your feet together so that it forces you to keep your posture straight. And after a couple of practices, whether it's five, 10 or 15 presentations, you'll get so annoyed of putting your feet together that you'll naturally transition into a position that you're more comfortable with. As always, if you enjoyed this week's episode of Master Talk, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well to see more videos like this. And if you know one person that's struggling with public speaking, be sure to send them this video so that they'll be one step closer to mastering their talk. See you next week, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye now.